Shalaya Marathon Show, BitMEX, the OG crypto derivatives platform and the best place to buy your Bitcoin. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Leia Heil Pan Show. As always today, we're bringing you another incredible conversation which you really can't find anywhere else on the internet right now because censorship is rife and we are bringing you the most hot, I guess we could call it some of the most controversial, the hottest topics um, going on um, in the world right now. But before I do bring on my guests, I do want to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by BitMEX. And BitMEX is the OG crypto derivatives exchange and now actually has a spot exchange for you to easily buy and sell your crypto, especially in a bear market. You do need a name that you can trust. And BitMEX sets the standard in reliability, performance, and transparency, and has actually proven itself through multiple uh, market cycles in this is very important um, with the amount of liquidations we're seeing going on right now. Um, BitMEX is actually celebrating the start of BitMEX spot with $1 million in USD prizes. So to enter, all you have to do is trade the equivalent of 250 US dollars. So you could grab some Bitcoin during the crash. So I'm going to leave all that information for you um, in the description. If you are watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description. So definitely check out BitMEX. Now, before I bring on today's guest, I want to tell you, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to bring you such incredible conversations. So joining me today is the founder and director of the Trends Research Institute and publisher of the weekly trends journal magazine he's the author of the highly acclaimed and best-selling books trend tracking and trends 2000 it is gerald salenti gerald welcome to the show how are you well, i'm very well thank you so much for having me on it's such a pleasure. I am so excited. Um, I've been following everything you do and everything you talk about for what a really long here? time. Um, and there's a lot of synergies here. Um, and I really? like, uh, can you hear me? Okay. You can't hear me. Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Guys, let me know in the comments I'm, if you can hear me. We're breaking or, up. Um, I don't hear you. You can't hear me. All right, guys, let me know in the comments if it's me or if it, if, if it's Gerald, let me see. Um, audio. Um, can you turn yeah, your volume up? up yep. Can you hear me? You're broken up and, and the thing is stagnant here. Oh, I think everyone can hear me, but I, I'm not sure that you can. Um, I don't hear you. You don't hear me. I can hear you perfectly. They can hear both of us. I don't know why you can't hear me. All right, let's, um, I'm going to, I'm going to end the broadcast and I'm going to go again. Okay. okay? Sure. All right. Hang on. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Perfect. I don't know what happened. Um, they could hear me. So yeah. there you go. Um, all right. Well, I want to just kick this off. Let's just do it. What do you say about the current situation right now? Um, are we in a recession? I know they keep sort of changing the definition of what a recession is. Um, so I want to get your take on it. Of course we're in a recession. I mean, look, who, look who's saying we're not in a recession. Janet Yellen. Oh, Janet Yellen. Who's Janet Yellen? Oh, you mean Janet Yellen that used to be the, the head of the bankster gang called the Federal Reserve? Oh, that Janet Yellen that's now the Treasury Secretary of the United States? What imbecile and moron can't see who's running the country? The banksters are right there. Oh, the Janet Yellen that was yelling back, oh, back in April of 2021? Salenti, you and all of you others that say there's inflation out there, why, how stupid you are. It's only temporary. And then it became transitory. Mm. And now she's saying the recession is a transition. Oh, yeah, how about trans temporary, transitory, transitionatory, and how about transgendatory? That's mm -hmm. really be America today. Let's be inclusive. So low. Let's really be stupid and keep swallowing the crap. Keeps. Oh, oh, she's our Treasury Secretary, Your Honor. Oh, yeah. Look at the garbage they're shoving out. The people are going down the crapper. We write about it each week in the Trends Journal. How many can't pay their bills? Oh, the debt level. Oh, Americans are only over $16 trillion in debt. Barely could pay off their credit cards. Living paycheck to paycheck. Hey, but the fink guy over there at BlackRock. 
Oh, look at all the money they're making. Oh, and how about black stone? Oh, why you're being sexist. Oh, racist, excuse me. <laughs> you got the wrong one. Blackstone. Oh, yeah. What are they buying up? All these companies buying up all the housing so the workers of Slave Landia could rent them because they can't afford to buy them. What recession? It's, it's over. We are in the greatest financial, socioeconomic, and geopolitical crisis in the history of the world, part one and part two. So for you, this is clearly very obvious. Um, why do you think that Janet Yellen and the likes of all of those types of people um, are lying, are saying that it's transitory? Either do they just not know, are they just stupid, or are they bad people? What do you think? A combination of all three. Again, again once upon a time, there was a story about somebody by the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. He becomes violent. He becomes, the Prince of Peace becomes violent, makes a whip, you couldn't buy him at Walmart's back then, and drives the money changers out of the temple. Oh, you mean the Goldman Sachs gang? Hey, was Jamie Dimon's great, 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 great grandfather there? Oh, the Goldman Sachs gang? The Merrill Lynch mob? What are you kidding? It's, it's a crime organization. It's a crime syndicate. Anybody that calls this a government is really stupid, deaf, dumb, and blind. By their deeds, you shall know them. Hey, Jamie Dimon, you're too big to fail. I'm Obama, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner. I want that guy Gaddafi out. I want the guy who side out of that. Oh, yeah, that, that Obama? Here, you're too big to fail. Here's a couple of billion dollars, a hundred, a couple of hundred billion, and the Federal Reserve dumping in 29 trillion between 2007 and 2010 to bail out the banksters? Oh no, that's not my number. That's from the Levy Institute at Bard College. It's a crime syndicate. They could care less about us. The bigs are getting bigger. They own everything. When I was a young guy, they had things called drug stores, grocery stores, stationery stores, hardware stores, no more. All chains now. The mm -hmm. mom and pop slaughtered, but the bigs bought everything. All of those private equity groups. Yeah, yeah, all of those hedge funds. None of that existed when I was a young man. You use the term banksters. Um, I love that term. But for those that don't know, could you sort of get into the detail of what you would say the biggest issue is with the banks, you know, what makes them so criminal? Well, they're because oh, they're only concerned about themselves. Again, look what they did. You know, they, they artificially propped up the markets. Oh, by the way, Jesus Christ, after he drove the money changes out of the temple, whoo, on the cross three days later. All right? It's a crime syndicate. It was made up by another slimy, made rotten hell piece of garbage crap, Woodrow Wilson. The slime ball that got us into World War One, The guy that gave us the federal income tax. We didn't have him back until he came in in the, mm -hmm. in the 19, was it 1913, 1912? It's a crime syndicate. They control everything. All we are are workers of slave landia. Oh, they well, we're going to do away with the Glass-Steagall Act. Oh, yeah, we're going to let the, the gangsters, uh, banksters gamble, too. Oh, don't worry about it. If you lose money, uh, don't we'll, we'll, pay, we'll bail you out. You know, don't buy their deeds, you shall know them. They get us into wars, they steal our money. How could anybody with a brain bigger than a pea look up to these clowns? Who's your favorite? Little Chucky Schumer? No, I like Nancy Pelosi. Oh, no, <laughs> Lindsey Graham. Now, there's a, a nitwit for me. Oh, how about Ted Cruz? No, no, Mitch McConnell. How could you be so damn stupid? Mm. They keep using the term stagflation, but you're more interested in the term dragflation. Well, What's the difference? That word now, I can't say drag. Oh, you can't say dragflation. Oh, yeah, of course, you're not allowed to say drag. Children, the babies can say it. The children are allowed to say it in Drag Queen Story Hour and all that rubbish. But um, but yeah, no, what, what's the difference? Dragflation means the economy's dragging down and inflation's going up, and they're still selling the lie of stagflation. Going back to the Federal Reserve, why they do it? They did it when they launched the COVID war. First of all, let's go back to 2018. 
Okay. Tracking trends is the understanding of where we are, how we got here, and where we're going. Let's go back to December 2018. Once upon a time, a guy by the name of Donald Trump, a narcissistic guy, was president of the United States, the presidential reality show. The economies, the markets are crashing in December of 2018. For months, 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 day after day, Trump is going after Jerome Powell, the Fed head, to lower interest rates, to artificially boost up the markets. Mm -hmm. And they did. Go back to 2019. Remember the repo disaster from September 2019 to January 2020? The Federal Reserve dumped in some $10 trillion into the repo markets. This thing was going down. It was artificially propped up before the COVID war. Then the COVID mm. wars law. Oh, and the prostitutes, the media whores that get paid to put out by the corporate pimps and the government whore masters, they're blaming the problems now, quote, on the pandemic. Anything that happens that's yes. negative, the pan no, not the pandemic, the political scum that locked us down, the little dictators, dictators in a country near you, a mayor, senator, whatever, governor, prime minister, whatever, whatever, that not the pandemic, the people that did it. The damage that's been caused by the COVID war is incalculable. Let's go back to why they were lying or stupid about interest rates and not raising them. Because then the Federal Reserve, besides the United States dumping in about $6.5 trillion to artificially juice the markets, oh, there's no inflation. That fake money didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. The Federal Reserve brings the interest rates down to zero. They're artificially propped up the equity markets in 2020 and 2021 when they should have been crashing. Look at the businesses that have gone out of business. How, how about the office occupancy rate? Well, it's only about 40% in America. You mean 60% of office buildings aren't filled anymore? Yeah. Oh, what's going to happen to all those offices that, that were overbuilt before? Oh, oh, and interest rates are going up, and now you got to pay more on your loan? Oh, and interest rates are going up, and the debt level in the United States is over $30 trillion. You have to pay more? Oh, but the dollar's doing well. Let's go to Europe. How about the clown running the show over there? Oh, awful. Oh, God, where did she come from? Oh, the IMF before that? You mean the International Mafia Monetary Fund? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, oh, there's no inflation, she said as well. What did they have? Negative interest rates. Hey, all you people of Slavelandia, when I was a young man, we used to put our money in the banks and get interest on it. Now they just steal your money. They don't give you anything for it, but they make money on it. Negative mm -hmm. interest rates. And now they're bragging that they brought them up to zero. Oh, and your inflation rate is only 8.6%. Oh, if you're a member of the IMF, look God. And you loan money to a country, the God, they got to raise their interest rates one percentage point above inflation, the God. That means the interest rates in the EU, the God, should be 9.6%. And in America, they should be 10.1% with your inflation rate coming out at 9.1%. It's a crime syndicate. They're only interested in the finks of BlackRock. They're only interested in the hedge funds, the private equity groups that own everything. That's all they care about. They're money junkies. So I'm going to get into all of, I want to get deeper into this. Um, but before we do, I want to know what's the difference in your opinion then between where we're at now um, with this recession and 2008? Because I've seen people are still actually spending now as if we're not in a recession, completely different to 2008. So what's the difference here? The difference is all the businesses that have been destroyed, the lives and livelihoods of billions of people that have been destroyed with a two and a half year almost going on, Oh, two and a half year war of the yes. COVID war. Again, you have an office occupancy rate of 40%, right? How about all those businesses that depended on a thing called commuters? Oh, you mean the dry cleaners, the shoe repair, the, the, the hair store, oh, 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 happy hours? Gone, gone, dead, dead. All the businesses that have gone out of business, they're not coming back. Oh, it'll come back. Remember you used to say that? It'll come back. The damage that has been done now, let's go to the big picture. 
interest rates going up, right? All right. over the world. Crazy. Okay, now, oh, there's a place called Sri Lanka that nobody heard of until it made the news. Yeah. And, and how, about <laughs> other, how about all those other emerging markets? Oh, you mean all those emerging markets that borrowed all that money in dollars? And now mm -hmm. interest rates are going up and their currencies are going down? Those, those places... Oh, yeah. What's going to happen to them? This is a global crisis. And then you have the, the idiocy with the Ukraine war going on and all the sanctions that they put on Russia, quote, to punish Putin, are punishing mm -hmm. the people. Let's go back to those emerging markets that are all submerging. Look at, look at how this, I'm telling you, we are in the worst geopolitical and socioeconomic crisis of a lifetime. I've been in this business for 42 years. I'm very concerned about what's going on because my business is to look ahead. And the What head, concerns you, though? What is it specifically that's concerning you? Again, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Look at the crime mm -hmm. rates going up. And then the biggest concern right now, of course, is World War III. It's begun. Yeah. It's not going to become official until there's a nuclear exchange, some false flag. Matter of fact, this week, the Russian defense minister said, the Ukraine defense minister admitted that the United States is on the field helping the Ukrainians fire these missiles. So it's not a proxy war. We're at war with Russia. If you, I said to you, listen, give me some guns. I want to blow this guy's brains out across the street. And you gave me the guns and I blew his brains out. You're an accessory to the crime. Yes, America is at war with Russia. Again, they, the idiocy of how they, they brainwash us when we're kids. World War I, little girls and boys, began when they assassinated the Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo. Yeah. What the hell is an Archduke and where's a Sarajevo? Or what is uh -huh. it? It was going on long before that. World War II started when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. You mean nothing was going on before that? You mean FDR didn't close off all the China's exports and, and ban oil going in there? Oh, no, no, no. It only happened when they bombed Pearl Harbor. It happened, we're at World War III. When they asked Albert Einstein, a cat that knew a thing or two about the atom bomb, what kind of weapons are going to be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know, but they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the fourth. Mm. We have mentally ill people running and ruining our lives. How low can you go to look up to a Biden? How stupid can you be to a little cazzo, nobody, arrogant little boy Macron over there in France? <laughs> Remember the jerk they had that our great, great illustrator, artist that does the covers of the Trends Journal, Anthony Frieda. If I said, Frieda, listen, get me a cartoon character. I want to make him the prime minister of the UK he couldn't have come up with a freakier looking stupid jerk clown like Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. Look at the idiots, the imbeciles, the mentally ill freaks that are running and ruining our lives. World War II is not ancient history. World War I is not ancient history. We got sick people, mentally deranged people that are destroying the lives and livelihoods of billions. I'm little Gavin Newsom, another daddy's boy. I'm locking down California, eh? To yep. flatten the curve of COVID. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Roll out the red carpet. Yes, sir. How can you believe these crapheads? How can you believe a little Georgie Bush, another daddy's boy born on third base and thought he had a home run? We're going to get Osama bin Laden, get her alive. Oh, yeah, and 88% of the people swallowed the crap and we evaded Afghanistan for 20 years. Oh, those Russians. Oh, the same George Bush. We're going to get that guy. We got to get, what was the guy's name? Uh, Which one? Hussein. Saddam oh, Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Destruction in ties to Al-Qaeda. A lie, an outright lie. Oh, but hey, he's the president. He could lie. And by the way, little Georgie Bush said, and he tried to kill my daddy. He actually no. said, this is the imbeciles we got. Oh, and don't forget to roll out the red carpet roll and salute. And all these generals, General Miley and General Mad Dog Mattis with all of their, all of their military drag 
Mm. Grow the hell up. What are you in? Boy Scouts sewn off all this crap. Oh, I'm with you. I want to I want to get back to Russia and Ukraine just for a second, because you mentioned um, how the sanctions are supposedly supposed to harm Putin, but um, that's not quite the case. So you've spoken a lot about SWIFT and how actually taking Russia off SWIFT isn't necessarily the best idea. Um, so I want to understand more about this war that people don't sort of realize we're, we're in right now. This is the magazine cover of the Trends Journal back in 2014. Happy face there, right? It's the overthrow of the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych by the United States with Victoria Nuland and others because Yanukovych wanted to do a deal with the IMF and the EU because Ukraine has been broke since the breakup of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. The European Union called Ukraine the most corrupt country in Europe. The European Union, the clown boy that's playing president, Zelensky, you can't make this crap up. What did he do before he became president? Oh, he played the president of Ukraine on a sitcom. Oh, and also played the piano with his penis. Oh, that guy? Yeah. All right. He came in because he said he was going to get rid of the oligarchs and bring get rid of corruption. And he's a member of the club. The Guardian even did a story about it after he got elected. Mm -hmm. So people have no idea of what happened in Ukraine, how the United States overthrew it, the lies that were told. Oh, again, the deal was he was going to do a deal with the IMF and, and the EU. And Putin said, I got a better deal for you. I'll give you lower interest rates and I'll cut your gas prices. OK, we'll go with you. <laughs> That was the overthrow. And then the right. other two things, after when the war started, Germany and France came out with the Minsk agreement where that separatist region where the people had voted for Yanukovych didn't want to go with the overthrow government. They were going to be a separate area. But Ukraine ended up killing, and even Zelensky admitted it last week, we wrote about it in the Trends Journal, the ongoing war that began in 2014 in the Donbass region, where they killed mm. 15,000 people there. Number three, the breakup of the Soviet Union, the deal was between Gorbachev and Reagan and Gorbachev and Bush Sr. that, quote, NATO would not move one inch further. Yeah. There were 16 European nations, now there are about 30. And by the way, we would love it if the Russians were up in Canada with missiles aimed at us and the Chinese were down in Mexico with missiles aimed at us. And they were doing mm -hmm. continually naval drills off the coast of New York and California. We would love that. Hey, but America could do it. We're bringing freedom and democracy. Yeah. Read the book Wars a Racket by General Smedley Butler, the most decorated Marine in American history at the time, 1935. He warns what a disgusting country it's become with the wars being launched by the banksters and the other bandits and how what he had to do to bring Standard Oil into China and the Brown brothers so they could do deals in Haiti and Cuba, on and on. You think the United States would have invaded Iraq and be in eastern Syria and take over Libya if their major export was broccoli? Probably, probably not. But what do you think about then the last two years, um, given, let's talk about, like, you know, the, the lockdowns and the money printing, how, because um, obviously you're laughing at the lockdown, so um, how intertwined is that? I did speak to somebody who mentioned that they said that the recession never, ever went away and they used the last two years as an excuse for um, an inevitable economy, which was just ready to collapse. So what's your take on the last two years? They were 100 percent right. As I said, they go by the data. The, the economy was ready to collapse. It's it been artificially pumped up since 2008. You know, you, you know, Salenti, you got it wrong in 2012. You said it was going to go down again. Yeah, you're right. I got it wrong. They didn't teach me about a thing called quantitative easing was mm. zero interest rate policy in economics 101 or graduate school. 
they made this crap up. America has, and, and Europe have become communist fascist nations. Mm -hmm. And that's not just a line, I'll tell you the why. On the communist side, when the COVID war broke out on January 20th, 2020 in China, the year of the rat, the first thing they did was lock down everything. And what did they do? They locked down Hong Kong. I used to be on Hong Kong TV in 2019. You had a million people taking to the streets out of a city of 7.5 million. Can't get a million people to take the streets in America at 332 million because they were fighting against Chinese taking over the Hong Kong. Yeah. The COVID war breaks out. They lock down Hong Kong, pass the Security Act, and that's the end of it. What happens next? We used to make fun of the Chinese for wearing masks. Yeah. They locked down the place. And then you got the clown over there in Italy, locked down Italy. And mm -hmm. then one country after another followed. So it became the Chinese way. Yeah. And all of these little dictators, governors, locking down, making up crap. I mean, how could you be so damn stupid? Look at that little clown, the, old, the governor of Ohio, DeWine, Witless Whitmere in Michigan. Hogan, another daddy's boy over there in Maryland. Little Andy Cuomo, another daddy's boy in New York. Oh, they even gave the clown an Emmy. They gave him an Emmy for spewing out his crap so well during the COVID war. They destroyed the economy and artificially juiced it up with the fake money and negative and zero interest rates. That's where we're at. And they, the economy, again, you go to New York before 2020 and there were four rent signs everywhere in 2019. Right. So that's on the communist side. On the fascist side, a guy by the name of Benito Mussolini called fascism the merger of state and corporate powers. Hey, mm -hmm. we're going to buy them corporate bonds. You, you're just a piece of crap. Hey, but we'll buy your bonds. You're a member of the club. Oh, and how about one after another? Look at the new deal they just did. We got to make chips in the United States and we'll give these big companies your money so they can make chips. Hey, how about giving me money? You're just a piece of garbage. No tax breaks for you. Nothing for you. Oh, and by the way, nobody talks about the slime ball, the biggest slime ball that made mm -hmm. us little Billy Clinton, a little nobody. Uh, NAFTA, remember NAFTA? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, how about bringing China into the World Trade Organization? You look at China's GDP from 1970 to they came into the WTO two, days before, two weeks after 9-11, poof, their GDP skyrockets. Oh, and the crap they used to sell us? We don't want those dirty manufacturing jobs in America. We're gonna we're gonna make a service sector society. We're gonna get mm. rid of them. So now you could you could become a plantation worker at Walmart. I remember when they were fighting not to have Walmart. Walmart is a brand new invention. Only happened really big time, like in in the uh, the, the late, it started in the late seventies, early eighties. And then all the big they did away with the Robbins Patent Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, Glass Steagall Act. Gave everything to the bigs. So it's all connected. It's all connected. There's something very important, by the way, going on in, in Russia. One yeah. of our top trends in 2022 is self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Russia is going against globalization. Russia's oh, going against globalization? Yep. Oh, oh, McDonald's pulled out of Russia. Oh, great. They should have forced McDonald's to stay <laughs> in Russia so the people would have been become too fat to fight like in yes. America, you know? <laughs> so, and all these companies leaving Russia. So other Russian companies are going to take their place. Russia has all of the human and natural resources they need to be a self-sufficient nation. America used to be a self-sufficient nation before the Bill Clintons and the other slime balls sold us out. Why do you think the Goldman Sachs gang would spend... Give Bill Clinton $300,000 to bullshit for one hour. It's payback. You mm -hmm. can hear the guy bullshit for free. <laughs> so, so what in I'm saying is, Rush, we are going into an end of globalization in a big way with Russia. But the worst part is, if we don't have 
another American revolution for freedom to break us away from the communist and fascist dictators that have taken over our lives. I'll tell you what to say. You have no right to say what I don't want to say. Yeah. I am an authority and you have to believe what I believe. Anything that you don't believe that I believe is misinformation. Mm. Which, by the way, I think that's a sexist word, misinformation. Is it? Oh, because it's got some mis in it. <laughs> it's all sexist. Um, the information, you know. Let's yeah, yeah. Stupid about it. Yeah, no, no, I'm with you. Um, so I, I, it's interesting. I, I definitely agree with you. I, I can see the trend that's going on in the West, in America, the UK. You know, you're not allowed to say this. You can't say that. Social media. Um, it, it, it's truly um, incredible. But what I what I want to understand and get your your uh, your take on is why are we adopting the the Chinese way, right? Like you mentioned the masks, the lockdown, like we're doing what China's doing and we'll get to central bank digital currencies in a minute because obviously they have their digital yuan. Um, so I thought we don't like China. Why are we doing what China's doing? It's a nation because these these are power hungry freaks that are in charge and they use the power to, to be more control. At 26 years old, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate, the guy that ran the whole show. Okay. Nice man, Al Abrams. I got, I got on the inside. I was running major political campaigns in Westchester County, at that time the richest county in the United States. They were grooming me. It was the mm -hmm. worst job I ever had. I quit after one year. I'd be, you know, a young guy, you know, BSing in the back of the chamber. And we got a clown. We hire a slobby clown to open the door for these freaks to walk in. Senator Frank Smith, Senator Tom Ellis, Senator. Hey, what's the matter, man? Can't guy can't open the door by himself? And then my friends would leave me as we're talking, have a talking, and they follow the senator's seat, these big seats, you could blow on them and they move, pull it out and help them sit down. And they come back. I say, hey, man, what's the matter? Cat can't sit down by himself. He needs some help. He said, you know, Gerald, you have that kind of an attitude. You're not going to make it here. Hmm. I said, hey, that's not the way I grew up, man. You know, I'm a Napolitano born in the Bronx. I got a different vibe than you cats, you know. My good buddy, yeah. Donahue, his wife, Mary Donahue, became the lieutenant governor on the, on the Pataki. I, I was the chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. At 28 years old, I was staying at the Willard Hotel and putting meetings on at the Hay Adams. I was killing mm -hmm. environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement in the 70s. I had pictures oh, wow. of Reagan, uh, uh, princes, prime ministers, and presidents. I've been with them. So what's your take the then? Side. If I wasn't on the other side, I wouldn't know what's going on. Right. So when I say to you what's going on mm -hmm. is we have mentally ill, power-hungry freaks who've never worked a day in their lives that are running and ruining ours. Okay. And how, how deep does this go? Um, because people often link everything back to money. Like, you know, we mentioned COVID. There's a lot of people in the comments I'm reading now that say COVID was a scam. The lockdowns were a scam. Um, so how deep does this go? Um, people often look to World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. Um, what's, your, what's your take? Oh, it's all of it. And again, it's all a scam. look at the guy, look at the guy playing our defense contractor. Lloyd Austin. Oh, where was he? A defense contract that came from the military? Oh, yeah, General Lloyd Austin, sir. Yes, sir. The Lloyd Austin that just came, that was sitting on the board of directors of Raytheon, the second largest defense contractor in the United States, that keeps shooting off his mouth at how Russia has to be defeated? It's not a revolving door. They're in charge. Oh, how about the clown that just left the FDA, Food and Drug Administration? Oh, you mean the jerk that was the head of tobacco area that would regulate e-cigarettes and tobacco? Where did he just go to? Philip Morris. Their total control. This isn't America. It's commie fascist town. Again, by the facts, the merger of state and corporate powers and the commie little freaks that robbed us of our freedom and rights. You got to get that vaccination. Hey, how about that arrogant, arrogant boy, 
the Carville boy, the Clinton crapster that shoots off his mouth, that shot his mouth off James Carville. James, hey, Jimmy boy, that shot off his mouth. I'd like to punch the shit out of anybody that doesn't want to get vaccinated. Yeah. That they put out there. Come and try to punch the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, oh, and I didn't get vaxxed. Oh, but Biden did for Fauci Four did, times. Obama did, Clinton did. They all got COVID, and boy, I'm all happy. I got the vaccines and got the boosters because I, I, I got I got COVID, but I could have died. <laughs> It's true. I'm with you. I, I totally agree with you. Biden got COVID and then he got it again and then he got it again with all his different uh, booster shots. When did the change happen, though? Because America was supposed to be, you know, the land of the free. You come here, you know, the, the whole Red Scare. God forbid you're a communist. Like what happened? Or would you say it's always sort of been there? I have a photograph. I'll tell you when it changed. OK. 1963. I think it was November, it's a week before my birthday. I'm born on the 29th. So what's, okay. what's how many days before that? 20, what, the 17th? Or what is it? 18th. When they assassinated JFK. Oh, wow. That's when it changed. That's when it changed. You read Dwight D. Eisenhower's farewell address. January 17th, 1961. He warns the American people that the military industrial complex is robbing the nation, the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. Read his address. He said, this never happened. There was no ever military complex after World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. This is a general, a five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces in World War II. Again, a two-term president who's also quoted as saying, any man seeking the office of president is either an egomaniac or crazy. Hmm. I have a photograph, it's right over here. If you want me to get it, I'll get it. Of John Connolly and his right. wife, Nellie. John Connolly, and they we're in front of the book depository where Kennedy was allegedly assassinated from. 1992. He wanted to meet me because in one of my books, Trend Tracking, I had forecast that be a new third party and someone like Ross Perot would be the guy. I wrote mm -hmm. it in 89 and Perot became the guy. We, we're in front of the Anatole Hotel, uh, in front of the, the book depository, in a limousine. And this is the guy that took the bullet in the back sitting in front of Kennedy. He also, now as the governor of Texas, he also became the Treasury Secretary under Richard Nixon but that took us off the gold standard. Yeah. We're walking back into the Anatole Hotel, and he said to me, you know, Gerald, he said, I read your book. He said, it's a fine piece of work, and I know your heart's in the right place, but you don't have a clue what's going on, and right. neither do the American people, because if they did, there'd be a revolution in this country. You ask me what happened? That slime ball LBJ, did he get, did he get, uh, what's his name, uh, Kennedy assassinated? Because right after Kennedy's assassinated, the Vietnam War. You're asking me what happened to America. I was prime draft meat in those days. Every day I'd wake up, every day they're going to get me, they're going to get me. If we don't stop those, those commies in Vietnam, those dominoes are going to keep falling. And before you know it, those communists are going to take over the world. All of Asia first. 58,000 Americans were killed. We killed over 3 million Vietnamese. Poisoned the place with Agent yeah. Orange. Friends of mine, you can't mention the word Vietnam. They're so heartbroken. And they remember the, what had happened there. 250,000 seriously wounded. And America's talking about Russia and they're selling the same line. If we don't stop those Russians over there in Ukraine, before you know it, there's going to be a war and they're going to be taking over Europe. Oh, you mean the Ukraine where they're taking down the statue with Catherine the Great because Catherine the Great hated the Ukraines, according to them. Oh, and when was Catherine the Great around? You mean the 1750s? You mean this crap has been going on from the 1750s 
And now you're telling me I got to get involved in this? You ask me when America went down? When they killed Kennedy. And then you look at all the things that, 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 that Johnson did. It was guns and butter. Guns and butter. America was the most thriving industrial nation in the world. The other ones have still been destroyed. And what does he do? He's, they changed the immigration law. I had cousins from Italy that couldn't come in. They changed the immigration law to get cheap labor. Mm -hmm. Butter. Yeah, give them, put out a lot of free money over there. Shut them up, shut them up, shut them up. One after another. They just, and then, then they, they destroyed the country. And they just kept on going. And then war on terror. Yeah. You know, one after another. And now we're going into World War Three. I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken to see where the future is going. You know, my, Where do you think it's going? It's going to hell. It's hell on earth. Every damn day. Oh, Nancy Pelosi went to, to tell, what the hell are you doing over there in Taiwan? Yeah. It's none of my business. Oh, oh, and we're going to defend Taiwan. Oh, you're going to go defend them? You mean after your husband starts do finishes doing inside deals and making millions? Then what's your family worth? About 500 million bucks? Oh, and my daddy was mayor of Baltimore. Oh, and he was congressman in, in, in Maryland. And my brother was mayor of Baltimore. I'm a member of the club. I never worked a day in my life. I've been in the political system. I'll tell you what to do. This is America. I'll tell you what to do. I'm your governor. I'm your mayor. I'm your president. Do what I tell you to do. Get that vaccination or go to hell. Lose your job. This is America. I'm heartbroken. So what, what do you do? What do we do? How do you, how do you I'm change the course? I, can. I launched Occupy Peace. I had a huge rally over here in January, July 23rd. I own the most historic four buildings in America, the only place with pre-revolutionary war stone buildings. I bought them because the seeds of democracy were sown here. I had Judge Napolitano, Gary Knoll, guy Progressive Radio Network, Scott Ritter, Phil Giraldi, former CIA guy, music, the hot damn band, streets packed, 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 closed down the streets. Not one word in the media. Hmm. You Never think I did this for me? You think I spent all this money and put all my energy into this for me? I want to bring peace. This, I am an American. I believe in people like George Washington, who tells us no foreign entanglements and particularly warning us not to get involved in all the crap in Europe. Mm -hmm. And don't love a country, don't hate a country. You're an American. This is your country. Oh, you're an isolationist. No shithead. You want to go to Ukraine? Go fight. You want to send your money? Oh, we only sent 60 billion already as the nation's going down the crapper. You send your money, don't want mine going there. I honor the founding fathers. I honor Dwight D. Eisenhower. Screw you. What the hell are they? Don't you know who I am? I'm Gavin Newsom. Yeah. Again, so, one. Yeah. Not we sent out thousands and thousands of press releases over the course of three weeks, not even local coverage. Peace is forbidden. So anyway, you ask me what I'm doing. I'm doing everything I can, because if we don't unite for peace, we're going to die in war. And do you think that so, I mean, given everything that you said, it sounds like you think America is 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 on the downtrend massively. You know, it used to be, you know, like we've had the British Empire. We saw that collapse. The Roman Empire we saw that collapse. The American Empire. Um, I imagine you see that collapsing. So no, what are the new superpowers? It's, it's, it's collapsed already. Look at these arrogant generals. You guys haven't won a war since World War II. Shove your crap down your throat. Stop killing people and stealing my money to do it. Calm down, Salenti. Don't be angry. Be a good American. Mm. Bend over and swallow the crap. Swallow the crap. I got a, one of my tenants over here in the 1774 Academy, a place called Rough Drift. I redid the whole place. They had a sign on that day. They locked down. They closed down when the rally began because it was a political rally. These are the people that it made you be vaccinated to sit down and, and, and stay there. It wasn't a political rally. Nothing about politics. 
Nothing about political parties, nothing about politicians, about peace and freedom. What America's founding fathers fought for that had been stolen from us in front of our eyes. In front of our eyes. He who is not angry when there is just cause for anger is immoral. Why? Because anger looks for the good of justice. And if you can live amid injustice without anger, you are immoral as well as unjust, said St. Thomas Aquinas. So that's where you're at. That's where I'm Basically. at. I'm angry. That's where you're at. You're you know, angry. Yeah, you know, this isn't baloney. I used to teach close combat, had my own school for many years. Yeah. So I'm a real fighter. That's and true. I don't get in fights. I only attack the attacker. So when I say, you want me to do what you're, I'm not going to swallow your crap, Newsom. I'm not going to swallow your crap, Cuomo. I had rallies here when everything was locked down in July of 2020 for freedom, peace, and justice. Yep. They hate me. They hate me in Kingston. They hate Salenti because he's a man of freedom, peace, and justice. He doesn't tell you what to do, but you hate him because he won't swallow the crap that you eat. He won't bend down and bend over to take it up from the politicians whose you look up to. That's America. And my generation, the biggest sellouts, the biggest sellouts, the only reason they were protesting during the Vietnam War is because we were getting drafted. Where are they now? But not all my generation. I mean, a lot of the cats that we hear were, you know, older people, most of them. More older people and younger people, but the whole the whole game changed when they assassinated Kennedy. End of story. That's interesting that you say that your generation are the biggest sellouts. Um, that's really interesting, actually, um, because I feel like uh, my generation actually don't have any hope. You know, because like you know, you call yourself a fighter, right? Um, and um, you don't really find that much with uh, young men anymore because they don't sort of have anything worth fighting for, right? Um, so who, so sort of like what, whose responsibility is it? Are you saying that it's your generation? You didn't, I don't know, no, inspire. Your, well, my generation sold out. You go back to the 90s. And mm, they started the building all these ugly houses. You know, we yes. were the ones that were doing, you know, the, the whole new age movement. And then it became shop until you drop. Remember that phrase? Yeah. Shop yeah, yeah. until you drop. Grew up on that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That was my generation. And then again, the younger generation, they don't have a fight in them. They're not fighters. They don't teach no, you. No, they're fight. not. You know, I was the smallest kid in, uh, you know, they used to put us online. And I was always the shortest. So the bullies went after me right away. So as a little kid, I learned how to fight right away. And and now, now it's, no, don't be nice. Be, mm. No, 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 no. Here, I mentioned about the wars. This is a quote. A passionate attachment to one nation for another produces a variety of evils. That's George Washington. Europe has set of primary interests, which to us have none, or is mm. very remote relation. Hence, she must be engaged in frequent controversies, meaning they're fighting all the time. The causes of which are essentially foreign to our concern. None of our business. Yeah. Harmony, liberal intercourse with all nations are recommended by policy, humanity, and interest. And I mentioned Eisenhower before. Our military organization today bears little resemblance to that known by any of my predecessors in peacetime. Hmm. Or indeed good. by fighting men of World War II or Korea. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. 
Only an alert, knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge military industrial military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals. He warns us. Yeah. He warns us in the mm. councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex. That is not my quote. That is Eisenhower's quote. And there you got Lloyd Austin, the head of your defense department that sat on the board of directors of Raytheon. How stupid can you be? Yeah, I think it's it's a sad situation, actually. Um, I think I, um, I've obviously not seen what you've seen, um, but COVID over the last two years um, was a real uh, eye opener um, oh. over the the reality of how things are. Um, but actually, um, a lot of the stuff that I do is in Bitcoin. So I'd really be interested to hear your take on that. Um, because personally, I feel and you might have a completely different approach, but I feel like Bitcoin is in some way the answer to a lot of these different um, things that you're talking about. Um, so how, how do you feel about Bitcoin? Well, when you look at the price of Bitcoin still around, you know, in the, in the, in the 20s, and where did it start from? Zero? I mean, look where it is. You know, it's, it's still worth a lot of dough. And um, people are going to be looking for alternative currencies. The, the, the downside is a strong upside, particularly, you know, other general rate, because everything's going to go digital. Yes. You know, the, and that's the, that's going to be the big danger, I believe. And that's when they all go digital. It's going to be years and years from now because they're going to go digital. So they know every penny we spent, where we spent it, how we spent it, so they could get their tax money from it. So they don't have to keep working. And so when they go digital, they're going to they're going to do everything they can to stop the competition. But that's way, way, way down the road. That to me is the biggest, you know, of, of the downside of it. The upside is that in this time of economic chaos and uncertainty, people are looking for alternative currencies. The only reason the dollar is strong is because the other currencies are so weak. End of story. Mm. Uh, and again, look at the euro. It's now it's a parity almost against the dollar. Yeah. Why? Because they have zero interest rates. Look what's going on with all the emerging markets. Look how they're all going up. People are going to be looking for safe haven assets. Both prices, are, go, look where gold prices are under $1,800 an ounce. What are you kidding me? I mean, gold should be skyrocketing with inflation. Yeah. And, 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 and the wars going on and, and the uncertainty of economic collapse coming. So again, what's going on and the reality are two different things. The game is rigged. They look at the JP Morgan gang Four, four or five felonies. They've been convicted of convicted of. And what happened? They had to pay what a 90, $900 million fine for rigging the precious metals market. Hey, but Jamie Dimon didn't go to jail. They rigged the market right in front of your eyes. The whole game is rigged. Oh, they have mm -hmm. a thing called a plunge protection team. Oh, if the markets go down too low, Oh, hey, we'll, we'll let you know to go along because then we're going to push the money. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so again, long term, I, I think it's a, I, again, I don't give financial advice. Yeah. To me it's, it's gold, silver, Bitcoin, guns, and a getaway plan. Yeah, I actually agree with you. I like that. I like all of those. I like the guns and I like the getaway Um the getaway plane. Um, but no, I, I do definitely think Bitcoin uh, is um, an interesting one. But ju just your point on gold, why do you think it's skyrocketing then right now? Why it's down? It's because, yeah. Because I'm t it's rigged. Because mm. here's two things, very important. I mentioned earlier why the Fed did what they did, and that was to yeah. keep markets from collapsing and keep building them up. Once the equity markets collapse, then the plantation workers of Slave Landia will know how bad things are. The market collapsed. The market, your life is collapsed. You know that, but you forgot about that. But now you see how bad it is when the markets collapse. Number sure. two, when gold prices spike, people know how bad things are. So they're doing everything they can. We got the dollar. And again, the dollar has no competition. None. The Chinese you want, China's destroyed its economy again by their zero COVID policies. Look at their PMI that came out. You know, they're down in negative territory. You know, they, 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 all, they, they destroy their own economy. They're, they're, again, we've become the communist fascist states, Western nations. We've taken the commies and 
controlling the people at every level of life and fascism by the merger of state and corporate powers. The facts are there. Mm -hmm. It's all there. Um, but no, I, I think it's fascinating and I love everything you're doing um, because yeah, people need to wake up to all of this um, and realize that, you know, things aren't, um, things well, aren't good basically. You know, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm just doing it for me. You know, yes. I, you know, I, I have no kids, you know, I don't know, you know, family. It's just me. I'm not doing it because I want my kids. I'm doing this because I'm only me because I'm a Napolitano, born in the Bronx, born to be free. Yeah. When I was a little kid and I'd be shooting my mouth off, my father, may I rest in peace, would say to me in Italian, Papagallo, parrot, stop repeating what everybody else is saying and think for yourself. Yeah. When a situation would happen and I didn't know what was happening, my mother, may she rest in peace, would say to me, I hate cowards. Yeah. That's how I grew up. And now yeah. I see a nation of people that won't think for themselves. They'll only swallow the garbage, you know, shoved down their throat by the media. And they're cowards. They won't stand up to little boys of nothing. Little cowardly boys like Newsom and Cuomo. Oh, Costana. And, <laughs> and here's the detail. The American people don't believe anything until they see it on television. Yeah. Richard Nixon. Yeah, that's brilliant. All right. So that's what's going on. If we don't unite for peace, we're going to die in war. I mentioned just quickly, I own three of the most historic buildings. Kingston, New York was the first capital of New York State. The Constitution mm -hmm. that was written here, over 70% of America's Constitution comes from here. John Jay, the Supreme Court judge, was a judge here. The seeds of democracy were sown here. I was looking to leave the country. And in 2012, we were opening up the magazine, the Trends Journal in, in, in Germany. And I'd never been to Berlin before. And they're taking me all around East Berlin. I said, Mike, this place is beautiful. It was grander than Paris before it was bombed out. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, the 1930s, the, the Germans were the height of Western civilization, culturally, spirit, uh, philosophically, scientifically. You think of the great German names, Bach, Beethoven, Bach, all these. Where were the people to stop it before it was all destroyed? Isn't Dresden lovely? Why didn't the people stand up and fight? And me being an Italian American, how come they didn't stop it in Italy? The, the place was destroyed. They destroyed what took, and now the same thing's going on in Ukraine. What, what things that were built for centuries now being destroyed. Where are the people saying, stop, we need peace? I came back and it was a for sale sign on the Franz Rogan House, 1750s building. And I realized, I said, this is where this, I, and I bought the building when I came back. And I said, I can't run away. Where am I going to run? I'm only mm -hmm. me because I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I said, I bought these three buildings. The other building is a museum because they represent the soul of America. It was the four corners of freedom where the seeds of democracy were sown. That's why I bought them. I'm not in the real estate business. So I'm doing everything I can because as a visionary, Look at the look what they've done with the COVID war. They sucked the joy out of life. It's the horrible. At nine o'clock at night, people are still yes. freaked out, wearing masks. Little kids all screwed up. Uh, suicide rates skyrocketing, and every day fear and hysteria, fear and hysteria. That's all they sell. So if we don't unite for peace and freedom, we're finished. And again, they didn't do it in Europe. They didn't do it in Ukraine. And they're not going to do it next. The people will march off to war like that. Dumb enough to believe Bush's wars. Dumb enough to believe the COVID war. You'll be dumb enough to believe World War III. I think it was Yuri Bezmenov that said, uh, people don't know until people don't know until they physically feel the pain. Like you don't know mm -hmm. that you're like going towards a gas chamber until you're in the gas chamber. I yep. think that's what Yuri Bezmenov said. Um, but no, this is why I, you know, I enjoy having these conversations. Um, I, I'm looking at the chat now and I know everybody really appreciated it. Um, so where can people follow your work um, and everything that you're doing and maybe even get involved? I, I'm not sure. 
Well, the magazine is trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com, and not because it's my magazine, you know, I'm the publisher, but there's no magazine like it. We tell you what in the world is going on, what it means, what's next. There's no trend magazine. There's nothing. It's bullshit. They fashion trends. You know, no, no. <laughs> you know, we're talking geopolitics, socioeconomics. By the way, I'm the guy that coined the term clean food back in, in uh, 1993. New York Times did a story on it. it bottled water trend back in the 80s. You know, so I've been mm. on for a lot of years. And to donate is OccupyPeace.com, OccupyPeace.com. And I started the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace, and Justice. Nice. And that's, imagine, I started this in 19, excuse me, in 2021. I got the domain name, freedompeacejustice.com, freedompeacejustice.com. That domain name should have been taken back in 1994 when the, when the internet revolution began. That shows you the disconnect of the human spirit that I got that domain name, Freedom, Peace, Justice. And we do sermons each week. And this rally we had was also sponsored in part by the church. Well, I'll leave all the information for everyone um, in the description on YouTube so they can check it out. Um, but Gerald, I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Um, I love your enthusiasm and your passion for this. I think it's so important. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. And thank you for having me on. And thank you for all that you do and for speaking out the way that you do. Oh, it's my pleasure. Guys, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a video. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much, Gerald. Thank you. The Leia Heilpan Show.